YouTube, look at me spoiling you, making two YouTube videos two weeks in a row. Now, I told you last week I'm going to be better about it, and here I am. And I actually have a really exciting topic that I want to talk with you guys about. But before I do that, I have to get into my classroom, get ready for the day. It is like the last kind of full day of school with students. Technically, we still have Monday, but most students don't come in. Um, so I want to get ready for my day, and then I'll check in with you guys probably during my prep period. day on Friday. I just finished with my classes and it was a great day. This was the, I guess, second to last day of school with my students. I had all my AP classes today and we were finishing up our I Do, We Do, You Do project. The topics today were fission and fusion as well as half-life. Um, I know in the last video I talked a little bit about the project, so we were just kind of finishing up our nuclear part of the project, and it was a good day to kind of like end on because I thought the topics were really interesting and was able to hold the kids' attention while the students were presenting. So I think all in all it was a pretty good day. Now all I have to do is obviously grade them, so I will be doing that this weekend, and I'll be also looking at their peer assessments. So I have the students complete complete peer assessments that ask them to rate their team members in terms of their cooperation, um, in terms of their attentiveness to the assignment. It was just a quick four question Google form, but I think it was really effective in holding the students accountable while they were completing the project. Now for the major topic in this video, I want to talk to you about if you're new to teaching AP Chemistry. Truth be told, I am fairly new to teaching AP Chemistry. I taught AP Chemistry quite a while ago. I want to say it's been about six years. And so technically this was my second year teaching. So I felt like I was doing it all over again, brand new, especially because they had the rewrite of the course exam and description. So I think there are some things that I can share with you that made my life a lot easier over the course of the school year. Before I get into that though, my disclaimer is that you are not supposed to be working this summer. It has been an incredibly stressful year. So I am going to highly suggest that you do these things, but do them whenever you feel that you're ready. You definitely need to take some time to relax and recharge yourself, get ready for the next school year. So I don't want you doing this right away, but these are some simple things that you can do that I think will help you a lot in the long run. My first suggestion for you is to join AP Teach. Head over to apteach.org. You can read about their cause, their mission statement, but it has been an amazing resource for me just to collaborate with like-minded professionals, work together to really just find the best ways to teach our students AP Chemistry. It was an amazing support system for me this year. AP Teach is actually where I met my mentor this year. So I feel very fortunate to have met Dr. Kristen Vanderveen. She has helped me all year long with teaching, my questions. She has just been so amazing and this video can't do enough justice to how much she has really helped me this year and given me the confidence to teach such a hard content and then also to teach it in such a way that it can reach the kids in this virtual setting. So it has been an absolute asset working with her. I'm going to share below access to her website and to her YouTube videos. They are awesome and you should definitely use them with your students if you kind of haven't flipped your classroom yet and you're using other videos, you definitely want to check hers out. The second thing that I'm going to recommend that you can do right away is join the AP Teacher Facebook group. That group is, again, another collection of wonderful individuals that has helped and kind of sculpted me into feeling really confident about the content that I'm teaching, has given me ideas for different activities that I can do with my kids. It has been an absolute asset. We also have a great chuckle too. A lot of people will post jokes and it's just a very lighthearted, very caring community. So I'll also provide a link to that as well. The third suggestion I'm going to make is for you to print out the course exam and description. You wanna read it and study it because you need to know exactly what you need to cover for your students to be prepared for the exam in May. 
It really breaks down the pacing, although I don't necessarily agree with the pacing for each part, but it is helpful to kind of have some idea about how many periods you're going to be spending. It really just depends on the topics that are covered in your first year chemistry course at your school. So you'll be able to have a better idea by looking at the course exam and description, how many days you'll need for each topic based on the curriculum that you're already teaching in your first year chemistry courses. A lot of people ask me, do I teach in the order of the course exam and description? My answer is, well, sort of, most of the time. I don't feel that I'm at a point where I would be able to teach according to the course exam and description in order like that. I do kind of follow the textbook. I use ZoomDoll. Um, I love the ZoomDoll textbook. It's a great, great book. Um, it's my favorite. I have the 10th edition and um, it's wonderful. I also have the OWL that goes along with it, the online web learning problems, and those have been awesome. They, that has been an amazing tool for my students to learn from but I do follow the progression of the textbook. And what I do is I do select certain um, topics that the students are gonna cover. You don't wanna cover, obviously, the textbook from you know front to back. You wanna obviously select the things that you're gonna have to do. And so what I try to do is I'll usually sit open with my textbook and then I'll sit open with the course exam and description next to each other. And I can kind of compare the, the sections in the textbook that are in the course exam and description. And those are the sections that I assign for readings. My final suggestion to you, if you have a little bit more time on your hands and you really want to get going for the AP Chemistry class that you'll be teaching, is print out all the FRQs that you see on the College Board website and take them. Then, of course, look at the scoring guidelines, see how close you come, and that'll give you some pieces of information that you really need. So for example, it'll show you exactly the question types that the students can expect. I mean, usually it's kind of like shell shock, like the students are like, wow, I have to like constantly like switch what I'm thinking and doing because these questions are just switching topics all the time, but somehow they're all related and it's like really crazy for them. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you wanna see what the readers are looking for in the student answers. So by comparing the scoring guidelines, that will make your life a lot easier. And then finally, you just wanna know what you maybe need a little bit more help on. I mean, teaching at the AP level is tough, especially if you haven't looked at the stuff in a long time. So you're gonna find yourself studying just as much as the kids. So I suggest doing some of these problems, that way you know what you're getting into and you can kinda of identify those areas for growth that you need to work on in time before you teach those topics topics. So those are my top five tips for getting yourself ready to teach AP Chemistry in the fall. It is such a challenging course to teach, but it's also so rewarding and so fun. You've got the cream of the crop students in your classes in AP Chemistry, and I have absolutely loved it. It has not been easy, but again, major shout out to Dr. Kristen Vanderveen. You have been such an asset to work with. You have definitely helped me so much, and most of all, you've helped my students. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next week.